Welcome back to another CCIE Security Lab with myself, Kelvin, Network Wiz Kid. Today we're going to look at deploying firepower in rooted mode. So if we just quickly look at the blueprint topics, we can see, and I'll just drag this onto here. So if we look at the blueprint topics, uh, we can see that under 1.0 perimeter security and intrusion prevention, 1.1.a is deploying uh, the ASA and the FTD in rooted mode. So we'll focus on the FTD today and we'll cover that. So back to the presentation. As I do with my presentations, I like to, or at least for the CCIE uh, security lab presentations that I put together, I like to cover some main points related to the topic that we're covering. So I'll carry on doing that and with this we are looking at, as I said, rooted mode and the main points for rooted mode within uh, configured on the FTD. So a rooted mode operates from layer 3 and the reason I say from layer 3 is because when deployed in rooted mode we have the ability to um, configure advanced inspection and send uh, the traffic to be inspected uh, all the way up to layer 7. In rooted mode each interface has an IP address once set the deployment mode can only be changed on the CLI so when we come first of all when we configure the FTD device and we go through the setup configure the management IP address settings DNS settings etc at the end of that you will be prompted to select which mode you want to deploy in and in this particular case we would select rooted once that mode's been set you cannot modify that say on the FMC or if you're using Firepower Device Manager for local management you can't change that on the GUI you do need to go back into the CLI of the device and then change that and note once you do change that configuration will be uh, lost Encapsulated Remote Span can only be used in rooted mode so if for instance uh, ER span is to be used in a particular deployment where rooted mode uh, is, is not configured this is a consideration because you can only use this while in rooted mode. Sub interfaces are supported so we can uh, configure sub interfaces, assign VLANs to them um, and IP addressing etc. Traffic can be passed to the Snort engine for additional inspection, as I mentioned earlier. So depending on the license and uh, what will be used on that device, or what that device will be used for rather, uh, will determine whether you need to um, pass traffic up to Snort for additional inspection. Security zones on the interfaces are optional. So we don't need to specify a security zone if we don't want to. Configuring Firepower Rooted Mode is pretty straightforward and I should have really pointed out at the start of this um, demonstration today that it shouldn't take that long because it's pretty straightforward. Um, I just wanted to highlight some of the main points that I already have and then run through how we can uh, configure it. So first of all, on a fresh install, step one would be to connect to the CLI of the FTD and run through the installation and then select rooted mode. So as I said, um, and we can't demonstrate this today because one of the FTDs that I've got, it's all the, the initial set through the setup, configure the management IP address, um, gateway, you know, configure DNS settings, FQDN, and then at the end of that, you'll be asked to select a 
particular mode, so either rooted or transparent mode. And that's pretty much it. Once that's been done, uh, we can then, if using the FMC, we can use uh, the configure manager command to uh, configure the IP address and the key that will be used uh, to add the FTD to the FMC. Um, or there is the option to use the local on-box management, which is the Firepower Device Manager or FDM. In this demonstration today, though, we'll be using the FMC. So given that we're using the FMC, step three would be to add the device to the FMC. So the FTD has been configured with a, the FMC IP address or FQDN. Um, it's got the key configured and if that device is behind uh, NAT, we will need to configure a unique NAT ID as well. In this particular demonstration, we won't be doing that because we don't have NAT configured in. Once that's done, uh, we configure the FTD rooted interfaces. So whether it's sub interfaces or the physical interfaces themselves, we'll configure IP addresses. As I said, you can configure optional uh, security zones. Um, and will enable those interfaces. Before those interfaces are active, you will need to deploy the configuration changes from the FMC to the FTD as well. And that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. So we'll get straight into the demonstration today and I'll just quickly show you the topology that I'll be using. So I've got a pair of FTDs down here. We're only going to be using one of those um, which is FTD V002 and this is going to connect up through another uh, firewall and then we have um, I need to add another FMC here, but we essentially have FMC002 sat in here as well. So we're going to establish communication from the FMC in here down to the FTD, and then we can configure the rooted interfaces and conclude with this demonstration. So I'll just get the FTD over here and also I'll get the FMC so as I said the FTD which I am on now is uh, the initial setups being done but we don't have any managers in place the manager on the right hand side the FMC on the right hand side if we just do this is brand new um, so we can see here that uh, it's using the default IP address which come configured uh, on the uh, on the FMC as well. So we'll just change that. Um, so I'll just go into sudo, and then if I do And then I'm going to give it an IP address of 192.168.99. Uh, let's give it 20. So you can see now that the IP address for the FMC has changed. So now I should be able to access that via the uh, GUI and set that up really quick. Let me just do a root. Uh, okay, so we'll do, we'll just add a default gateway. Uh, default. default gateway and we'll just configure so now we've got our default gateway in there as well so now what we'll do is we'll just connect to it via the uh, GUI 
so that we can make sure that we've got access to that as well because this is a, a new installation of an FMC here so I've just brought that up now so I'll just connect to this and that's the UI and it's probably just worth pointing out actually so um, part of the the, the equipment list lists um, a f well a fairly older version now of uh, firepower it lists 6.2 um, we're now on 7.0 plus so um, I am trying to stick as much as I can with the recommended equipment list um, so if you are following along um, I will try my best to point out the versions that I am using but if I don't just refer to the CCIE security version 6 equipment list so we'll just log into this now let's not save that And as I said, because it's a fresh FMC, uh, we're pretty much at the, the setup uh, page. So we'll just change the password. IP address we've already set, but if you'd not set it and you use the default one, then what you would do is you would change uh, these to obviously match uh, your network segment. So we're just gonna change this to FMC V002 and domain call that network was kid.com DNS server we'll just give it the um, I was going to say Google but no let's not actually let's give it the umbrella the Cisco um, open DNS or umbrella IP addresses so those IP addresses are 208-67-222-222 and we'll give the secondary one as well which is 208-67-220.220 okay we'll leave NTP uh, sources as they're set um, I will change my time zone to match my time zone here in the UK wherever you are in the world change it to whatever it is or if you want to keep it to UTC you can keep it to, to UTC so in fact I'm going to keep it as uh, UTC so once that's done we'll just press save and then we can see that change there uh, I'm not going to install any rule updates now because um, it's not part of this demonstration today uh, I'll leave all my back backups. Um, licensing we can leave for now. And then we'll accept the end user license agreement and then we'll press apply for that. Now that's going to go away, configure the settings. And then, as I said, if you did change the IP address, you will need to reconnect on the correct IP address because this page uh, won't, won't reload. Once the processes have restarted, you'll be able to then access the dashboard, as you can see on screen now. So that'll all load, not will be shown because we've not configured anything, fresh install and all that. Um, now what we'll do is we'll go to the FTD and we'll configure the manager. We've got no managers configured there as you can see so what we'll do is we'll do configure um, configure manager add 192 168.99.20 which is the FMC's IP address and then we need to give it if we question mark you can see here we need to give it a registration key which is kind of like a one-time key that's used on both sides to make sure that um, 
you know it's authentic uh, when they're joining so we'll just <coughs> for the purposes of this demo we'll use a traditional Cisco 123 and then we'll press enter Once that's done, it kind of just gives you uh, a note just to say that that same key will be required in the FMC, as I've just pointed out. So now if we just do show managers, we can see that our FMC host uh, IP address is specified. Registration key is uh, not shown, obviously. Um, the registration status shows as pending because we've not tried to uh, register uh, anything yet, uh, any FMC to this device yet. So this changes when we start to register and we'll come back and look at how it changes. So for now, let's go back to the FMC and we'll go to device, device management. And what we need to do now is on the right hand side we click add and then we want to add a device. So we'll specify the host of the device and let me just recall what that host was actually. Okay, so um the management IP address of the FTD is twelve zero zero dot ninety seven we can call this FTD V double O two and then our registration key is the same one that we used on the FMC, so in this case it's going to free. Groups we don't have non access policy we do need to assign um, and because it's new we don't have any created so we'll create one quickly we'll call this site one um, in fact we'll call it CCIE site one no base policy and we've got three default actions we can either use uh, IPS uh, network discovery or block all traffic as in a traditional firewall so we'll just stick with the default And then we can't assign any licenses because we've not configured them actually and we might have to um, go back and configure those before we add the device. But let's see, let's, let's try and register it and see what happens. So once you're done, press register and it'll start to add the device. If you've got any firewalls or anything in the way that might prevent uh, 8305, port 8305 TCP, um, then do make sure you allow that port between uh, source and destination or else you won't be able to add the device. So if we just quickly go back to the FTD We'll do show managers. And nothing's changed yet. So we'll wait and see what comes back. And in the meantime, I'll just do what I've just advised you guys to do, which is to check any firewall rules. So a quick look at my other device and um, yeah it was just that firewall rule so um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, press that again yeah so as I um, <coughs> said earlier you see there that before you can actually register the device um, you do need to enable, in, uh, enable uh, smart licensing or a license so um, I guess that's a good thing to remember because as you can see there's something that 
I forgot to do so let's just go back to system licenses and smart licensing and we'll start the evaluation so we can see here we can either register or use eval so I'll just use evaluation for now and there that's done so we should be good now so let's go back to device device management add a device call it ftdv double two same key as we did before same acp uh, and as you can see now the licensing is different so we can select uh, the licensing um, so what we'll do now is we'll just we'll ju we won't select any of these for now we'll just click register and this should register now And once it starts to register, we should see a notification pop up around here somewhere. And there are those notifications. So you can see the device is now being added uh, to the FMC. So we can see it's still synchronizing here. And if we click on the uh, tasks, we can see what tasks are running so we can see it's discovery, it's still discovering the device but it's picked it up so we'll just give that a second to complete so once that's deployed we can finally start to configure our new FTD so we'll just click on the FTD itself and this is where we'll configure now our interfaces for our mod. So, let's start off by configuring gig zero zero. And while I'm here, actually, I'll just check the interfaces that are assigned to these. So for gig zero zero, I'll go ahead and configure this. This is going to be uh, my outside interface, if you like. You can see here you can specify mode. So again, as I referred to in the presentation, if you want to configure um, ER span here, then you can do so as well so we need to enable the interface we'll give the interface a name so we'll call this one outside security zone as i said you don't need to assign one um however in my case what i'll do is i'll do i'll assign one call it outside and then mtu you can change and now what we'll do is we'll assign a IP address. We're using IPv4 uh, and we're going to use 192.168.101.2 slash 24. Once we've done that, um, we don't need to do anything else on IPv6 or anything at all. Uh, our advanced settings or hardware configuration. So we'll just go ahead and we'll press save on that or OK. We can see that starts to apply the config, but until we save and deploy it, and it's going to change on the actual FTD itself. So gig01, we'll give this um, the name uh, inside. And again, we'll give it a new zone. We'll call this one inside. And then we'll assign an IPv4 address of 192.168.116.1 slash 24. And we'll just OK with that. 
and then what we'll do is we can uh, save the uh, settings so just go ahead and press save there and then we would then go ahead and press deploy we can see if we expand the um, the little radio button we can see what sort of configuration is going to be uh, or what configurations changed and it's going to be applied so we can see a device configuration and then if we click on details or over over details we can see um, in this case you can see next generation firewall interfaces and the policy so what we'll do is we'll just press deploy on that and the status of those as well as you can see with the management interface or diagnostics is green that sh those two should also change to uh, green once the uh, deployment has finished you can also monitor the progress if you click the tick uh, icon up here you can see the deployment progress and it's, it's nearly finished as well what we can also do is on the uh, FTD CLI and we can do this on the GUI but what we can do is we can do show firewall and we can see the mode that is operating so we can see the firewall mode is, is set to router so that's what we want in this particular demonstration and if we actually go to device on here for this particular FTD we can see the mode as well is set to rooted as well so we've got the correct uh, mode configured and um, now we've just completed the uh, deployment or configuration the configuration changes of the uh, interfaces so if we go back to interfaces and uh, let's just refresh there we go so now we can see that the status of these uh, is green and if we hover over these we can see packet sent uh, we can see the interface status uh, MAC address uh, etc on those interfaces as well so that's it that's essentially how you deploy the FTDs in rooted mode um, I appreciate that we went through the configuration of adding FTDs to the FMC as well so hopefully you can use that as a quick refresh uh, as part of the studies as well we also covered the configuration of the FMC or a new FMC and also the configuration of the FTDs and how we uh, configure those to join an FMC if you've enjoyed this video please do like uh, subscribe and if you're doing your CCIA security or you find my content useful please click that notifications bell so that you are notified of any new videos that I upload I will be doing um, more videos related to the CCIA security um, if we just go back here um, and go back on the tracker um, by the way this is a tracker that I put together for those that have not seen my previous video if you've not seen my previous video yeah go back to that you can download my tracker on uh, my website networkwhiskey.com and you can make use of this as well um, but I will be going through and creating videos where possible for all of the blueprint topics as part of my studies as well towards the uh, completing the CCIE security lab as well so um, again if you are working towards the CCIE um, hit that subscribe button because you'll probably find uh, these videos useful especially if you don't have access to uh, some of the uh, devices but until next time, thank you for watching.